this is the seed of what was the beginning of an extensive effort to teach what the prophet had literally postponed and agonized over. He said to many of those who were hesitant that an angel had come to him, literally as it were with a drawn sword and said, you cannot move the church forward one more inch until you begin to live this principle. And what he taught them, among other things, was that as it says in the book of Jacob, in the book of Mormon, if I will, saith the Lord, raise up seed, I will command. And now the command had been given. Eliza herself, when asked how she could do it, said she became convinced of the beauty of the principle and fell in love with the principle. The question that is rarely asked about the whole process is what did the women think they were really doing when they entered into this practice? One by one, their journals tell the story. They came to the conviction of this in tension with their earlier training only through a spiritual experience. They had to get a testimony, just as they had of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ himself had advocated and required this, and that the result would be a posterity who would be righteous as well as numerous. They really believed that this process would enable them to apply the spirit of the law of consecration to their marriage and that the Lord would send into their families choice spirits that they could then nurture in the admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they would become a veritable core of honest, faithful discipleship, and they would in turn be the army of missionaries that could go throughout the world and continue to build the kingdom. That's what they thought they were doing. The world at large wondered, if the issue is, but was it not introduced by men who were seeking their own gratification? The answer has to be obvious to anyone who thinks for 30 seconds. If that is the issue, if it's libertinism, if it's indulgence, there are other and easier and less costly ways to achieve it. If you settle down and build a second home, and have a wife and family and have to provide for them and love them and serve them, that's hard. The other way is easy. Polygamy was not intended to be easy, and those who entered it did so, aware of the personal sacrifices and the conquering of selfishness that it would require. The history shows us that there were tragedies and there were setbacks, and there were just as many problems with it as with monogamy. But the outcome overall was that, in fact, a faithful number of faithful children came into these families, and they remained the anchor families in the kingdom.